Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Man Take Shoes Out of Box. The episode where you get to sit there and watch me take a pair of shoes out of a box and tell you what I think of them. The shoes in question today are these, the Air Jordan 9 Powder Blue. These dropped earlier on in the week here in the UK. Wasn't a particularly difficult cop, although large sizes on the Nike sneakers app did go pretty quick. But I think for the most part, most retailers here in the UK and the EU have got full size runs sitting. And I think for you guys over in the US, you may well even have a full size run available to you on the Nike sneakers app. Now, one thing to note is this is an OG colorway from 1993, and they've only retroed once before back in 2010. And so for a lot of OG collectors, this has definitely been a sneaker that a lot of people have been looking forward to. In terms of the packaging, the box is really cool. It is this old school Jordan retro box with the Jumpman logo right in the middle. You have the Nike Air on the front of the box as well as on the back. Listen, the lines are sharp, the angles are oblique, the dimensions are correct it is a fantastic box i feel like the air jordan 9 is probably the most disrespected air jordan model out there and there's a couple of reasons for this one of the reasons is the fact that mj never actually balled in the air jordan 9 as a chicago bull in fact the legend goes that when tinker hatfield presented mj with the air jordan 9 before the 93 season he was so taken aback at how ugly it was he decided there and then that he was going to retire no no, no i'm only joking i'm only joking the only place you can actually see mj wearing a chicago bulls uniform and the air jordan 9 is if you go outside the front of the united center and take a look at the statue of mj where he is pulling the jump man dunking over some dude i feel like this history coupled together with the aesthetic of the shoe being a little bit boxy a little bit bulky a little bit work booty and the fact that it hasn't been dressed in particularly appealing colorways over the years somewhat explains the lack of popularity of the model now, as I said before, this is an original colorway from 93. These came out alongside the black and white pair or the Space Jam pair. I'm using my Mrs. pair for reference here, as well as the olive pair and the charcoal pair. The retail on these back in 1993 was $125. The retail on these retros was £190 or I want to say like $200 or $210. In terms of the shoes themselves, look, it is a very simple sneaker. You have this predominantly white white leather upper. You have these paneled patterned perforations that are border stitched. You've got the classic polyurethane midsole and the rubber outsole that feature the air cushioning. You also have the internal neoprene booty that first debuted on the Harachi and first debuted in terms of Jordans on the Air Jordan 7. In terms of the detailing, you don't have the Jumpman on the tongue like a lot of other Jordans. You actually have the Air Jordan fonts running across the top. You've got the Jumpman logo on the rear quarter of the outsole sole as well as featuring on this disc logo on the rear of the shoe where the Jumpman logo features in front of a globe. And then one of the redeeming features of the Air Jordan 9 is the outsole. A lot of people reckon that the Air Jordan 9's outsole is one of the best and as we talk a little bit more about the history I'm going to explain some of the details to you. All in all I feel like the shape of the shoe is really nice. Comparing it to some pictures of the OG Air Jordan 9 it's not that far off. The powder blue hues that you get shining through on the midsole as well as on the liners do appear to be a little bit darker than the retro version from 2010 as well as the OGs. But generally speaking, I feel like it is a really good looking sneaker. It's a great homage to MJ's Tar Heel days. And the fact that it's an OG colorway and we've only had it retro once makes these pretty special in my opinion. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the Air Jordan 9, seeing as it is a little bit of a disrespected model. These were of course designed by Tinker Hatfield. In 93, before MJ retired, he was coming off the back of his first three-peats. He was a global superstar and Jordan brand at that time was truly going international. And it's because of this international popularity and the global outreach that Jordan brand was starting to achieve at that time that we get certain global and international references coming through in the sneakers themselves. The first, the most obvious one is this tab on the back featuring the Jumpman logo on top of this globe, a representation that at that time Jordan brand was going global. And then there's the outsole. Now the outsole features texts in different languages and they're different on the left shoe than the right shoe. These words that occur in various different languages including French and German, Spanish, Japanese, French, include words like intense or dedicated and sport. 
And it's also because of this global appeal that MJ had in 93 that this shoe was actually selected by Tinker Hatfield to be the shoe that Jordan is wearing in the statue outside the front of the United Center, which went up obviously to commemorate MJ after he retired for the first time. The Air Jordan 9 also birthed the Air Jordan PE. You see, because MJ had buggered off to go and play baseball, Nike were in a little bit of a bind as to whether or not they even wanted to continue making Air Jordans moving forward. And so in a bid to continue to make the Air Jordan popular with consumers, they decided to give the Air Jordan 9 to a whole bunch of NBA players and give them their own team themed colorways. Now six players got their own Air Jordan 9 PEs with their own number stitched on the heel instead of the 23. And just a side note that the Jordan 9 generally comes with the 23 on the back but with the powder blue it's not the case. Now these players were and get ready for some nostalgia Penny Hardaway, Latrell Sprewell, BJ Armstrong, Mitch Richmond, Kendall Gill and Harold Miner. It is also true that the Air Jordan 9 was converted into baseball cleats for MJ as he played for the Birmingham Barons. And I feel like because of this, the Air Jordan 9 has been a really popular model for not only baseball cleats, but also football cleats. Back in 2012, we had the release of the Air Jordan 9 Kilroy pack that all were dedicated to different advertising aliases that were attributed to MJ in his absence from the league. You see, while MJ was retired, Nike had a little bit of fun with it, producing these aliases of MJ that were apparently still playing in the league sustaining this narrative that MJ, although he had ostensibly gone off to play baseball, was still actually playing in the NBA. And this is in a time where marketing and advertising from Nike was arguably at its best. So there's a little bit of history on the Air Jordan 9. Let's get these bad boys on foot and see what they look like. I actually went true to size on this. I got me a US 10. I generally go a half size up and I would say that going true to size with these is absolutely fine. The reason I didn't go a half size up is because I couldn't actually get it. I got kicked off the Nike sneakers app when I tried to go for a 10.5. And after wearing these around, I can safely say that these are actually fine. In terms of the aesthetic and how they look, I actually think they look brilliant. UNC Tar Heel colorway is one of the best colorways ever on any shoe, let alone a Jordan. And I feel like these will be really awesome this summer. And so there we go. That's my review. Those are my thoughts. It is a brilliant retro. It's great to see these sit. I wouldn't actually be surprised to see these go on sale in some places a little bit further down the line and so if you're not itchy with the trigger finger and you are able to stay patient throughout the summer season I could see these potentially going on sale but if you don't want to risk it I would recommend snatching these up now while you can it is a very cool shoe it's a slept on model it's got some great history and they are very very wearable what do you guys think of the Jordan 9 Powder Blues? Have I convinced you the Jordan 9 is cool? Feel free to let me know. And if I haven't, then that would be completely unsurprising. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch the video, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Take care for now and peace.